Hi, everybody. So tonight, I just want to reveal a beautiful message that the Lord has given me to um, Revelation 2, the entire uh, chapter. And um, I'm going to read through the entire of Revelation 2. And I'm going to describe some of the prophetic wisdom that came with it. Okay. This is about dismantling unrighteousness exposing idolatry and exposing uh, fleshly wisdom workers of iniquity and satan for what they truly are including witchcraft including covetousness including just sinful desire everything that is against the lord everything that is against god and the holy spirit anything that tries to rise itself up against the knowledge of jesus christ this is about coming back this is about let me just say what it is because <laughs> it's just it's fully loaded all right so and i'm going to be reading from the niv to the angel of the church in ephesus right these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands i know your deeds your hard work and your perseverance I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles or prophets, but are not, and you have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. So this small piece right here, this is just about those of us who are on kingdom spouse journeys Um they're on a different level um everyone that this message rolls across it's not just about kingdom spouses but it is about standing tall against the devil and his tricks and just being aware and standing in full authority of god wearing the full armor of god okay and it does speak here about people who are false prophets and pretty much how you have discerned through that guy has just given you this laser vision to just sniff out you know negativity some of us we come from you know we've seen false prophets before we might have even been tricked by it before like specifically this message is for those who have been tricked by it and now you understand okay so i'll continue you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Now, what does this mean? Now, not only um, once, you know some time ago you did understand how to be obedient how to seek the lord how to seek his face and you might have descended from that a little bit this is a warning to get back into it this is a message a glaring message to get back into those things that you cultivated as soon as you became born again as soon as you found the one true the living god as soon as you found him and, um, you know, some of us had certain verses, certain things that we repeat every day, praying three times a day, fasting, and just your zeal of the Lord. Some of us, it's like we've fallen, okay? And not only does God want you to repent, but he also wants you to turn back and do the things that he taught you to do. If you don't repent, he'll come to you and remove your knowledge. He'll remove the things that you worked so hard over this this pilgrimage. Like this sort of like coming back from being in exile or coming back from being in different religions. God is telling you, hey, it's time to turn on back. But I don't want you to just drag yourself. I want you to walk proudly. And you can only walk proudly in the word if you're reading your Bible every day. Okay. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches and to the one who is victorious. I will give them the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Amen. That is beautiful. Okay. So, 
real quick here. The Nicolations, and I went to look this up. The Nicolations pretty much, they practice in their church that grace gives you like a blank check to sin. Pretty much saying that you can do whatever you want as long as you come back and repent, as long as you know you have grace. And that's just not true at all. You know, so some of you guys have really, really been in your zeal. You've really been in your bag, you know, with the Lord. You really learned a lot through this whole experience. I mean, you've learned so much things in such a short amount of time. He just wants you to retain this information and don't go too fast in life. Don't jump the gate, okay? Do not jump the gate and do not hijack your information from the Lord. Learn it. Be peaceful. Be um patient with yourself. Always be humble. Always be graceful, okay? Continuing to the church in Smyrna. To the angel of the church in Smyrna, I write, These are the words of him who was first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, yet you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. This is a direct line about spiritual warfare. I said something uh, some time ago about wearing your armor of God. That's in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And it just speaks of your belief piercing the lies of the enemy with the sword of the spirit okay the sword of the holy spirit and every fiery dart that the enemy tries to throw your way to get you off course and just to get you to believe his lies or any idiotic thing he wants to tell you the shield of faith is a guard against that in psalm 91 the lord says i'll be your shield and rampart a rampart is like a fortress it's like something that is like a huge um it's it's huge and <laughs> it can con- it can contain or it can hold back um the person that's in it from anything that's on the opposite side of it so you're in the fortress of the lord if you really reading your bible trusting the lord number one and just doing what he says nothing bad will come to you but there are liars and they're all deceitful people there are manipulators and all kinds of spirits wishing wishing that they can catch you slipping wishing that you leave a door open for the devil to come back into your life because you knew the other side of it you you have been called up by god but There was a part of your life you didn't know God and there was things that you did and the devil wants so badly for you to go back to those evil things. Okay, there's so many, um, especially Psalms 37. There's so many examples in the Bible about wrongdoers, evildoers, workers of iniquity, anyone that works in chaos, anyone that works in deceit. There's so much ways that the Lord pays them people back. For the agony that they cause. So I don't want any of you guys to be on the other side of that. So when they speak of people who say they're Jews, they say they're this, they say they're that. um, And they act like people are slandering them. When they say, you know what, you really work for Satan. You know what, you're really not out here for the Lord. You're really just doing what you want to do. You're doing as you see fit. So that is a call to like check your religion check your religious behind check the things that you've been doing and make sure they line up with what the bible say okay and do not worship satan do not do not fall for that okay it says i tell you the devil will put some of you in prison to test you he want to test he want to make sure that um he really wants to rule you he really wants to control you but you have to do you have to last you have to endure if some of us are tired we have to ask for endurance but you're only tired and that's for the group of you that are tired it's because you're not believing enough in the lord you're not trusting in him enough or you're just not reading your word let me continue okay 
be faithful even to the point of death and i will give you life as your victor's crown so your salvation your eternal life it's all there for you, but only if you believe. I'm calling you to be aware of the devices of the enemy, the worldly wisdom, the witchcraft, the self-gratifying rules that we give ourselves. Um, some of us need to be called out of the stronghold of having this really strong belief that we picked up when we didn't know God and we think that it's like the best thing since sliced bread and you know some of us have worked so hard to be a certain kind of way and I'm not saying it's it's not godly you know the things that you're doing thinking that you're doing things without God there's not a single thing that you know especially hard things that we stop ourselves from doing. No, it's God stopping us. It's God disciplining us. God only corrects those he loves. Okay, period. All right. Um, we're cutting off the manipulation. The manipulating ourselves and allowing others to manipulate us on a higher scale. And it's certainly the narcissist system. Okay. This part right here is very, very important. Any act of giving in to sin and temptation will let the enemy right in to destroy whatever you have been establishing with your actions and your belief in God. Because we all know that uh, your your actions alone is not what saves us, but it is God's grace that saves us. But also, I want to mention that faith without good works is dead. So let's just say that... Um, you still have to believe so strongly and you have to move forward. You can't just stand in the doorway. You have to actually walk into the room and own that room. You have to own that room. Okay. Period. For we are called in to build our life upon the rock. We are told that Christ is the cornerstone for in him all things are possible. Some of us are believing God for a miracle and it just hasn't come to pass yet, but it definitely will. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to come in, but you are you are de de delaying yourself and denying yourself the beauty of knowing God is working in your life because of your thoughts, because of your actions that are not lined up with his purpose and just because of lack of information. OK, his truth is sharper than any two edged sword, but the enemy's lies are prickly. And they snag on everything. May you no longer be hindered by a lie that the enemy has taught you to incorporate in your mind. May you no longer have to deal with the strongholds, the bondage, the spiritual warfare. May you be completely free from all of that in Jesus' name. Okay. Whoever here, whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Now, I'm sure you most of you know the second death is if you are not a believer, um, you die once. Right. And then you don't have eternal life because you don't believe in Jesus and you are judged and you're placed in a lake of fire. That is the second death at the end of the world and everything like that. Revelation talks a lot about, you know, the proceedings of the second death and all this other stuff. It, I'm, I'm not saying it like it doesn't matter, but I'm just saying because we are believers, we're not going to focus on the second death because we're not having a second death. We believe in Jesus. OK, therefore, we have eternal life and that doesn't apply to us. Right. So to the angel of the church in Pergamum. Right. These are the words of him who has a sharp double edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. Not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Now. The thing about this is. You have to remember the most important part of what's being said here. These are the words of him who has a sharp double edged sword. So God is asserting the fact that he controls life. He controls how things go. Satan has no power over you. Number one. Number two. Him speaking about his words. It's like. He wants to remind you that it is a conversation. It's communication is what the Lord wants from you the most. If you don't get something instantly, you better say, Lord, huh? You better recall and see what it is 
see exactly what it is, not just for misunderstanding of the word, but misapplication of the word, not just for being confused, but just completely in life. We need guidance. OK, we need mentorship. We need a church family. We need to fellowship with other Christians. We need to be around those who are like minded that can keep us where we need to be. All right. Don't be a follower, but follow Jesus. Take up your cross and follow him, period. So this is a reminder to never be weakened by the enemy's devices to keep you dull or unbelieving. Hold your trust into God as a mantle and silence, subtle, small talk or just being double minded. I, I call it a uh, subtle, small talk, but the actual term for it, it would be um, intrusive thought or it can just be uh you know, based on your subconscious or what you might have once been a witness of, it's like you haven't it's low key, you haven't forgave yourself yet or you just are traumatized by something that has happened to you spiritual wise. Um, and it holds back your ability to learn or move forward from uh, what has happened to you. That can be that can go a lot of different ways and whatever way that is. You guys know that you and God are the only people that know, you know, what kind of soil you are. Some of us are good soil, you know, the parable of the sower. Some of us are a little bit thorny and we need to check ourselves and we need to remember what the Lord has for us or just for us. Okay, like any intrusive thought, don't even try to fight them. Don't even try to uh, have a rebuttal. Um, It's so much energy that you waste and mind power that you waste trying to talk back to intrusive thoughts when really it's like it's like an echo it's like something happening and you're repeating it over and over and over again to yourself that's torture okay that's torment nobody wants to live like that okay I even had to go me myself personally when I became born again And I was torn out of idolatry. The Lord saved me even after, even after I was non-believing and I was just confused and I just didn't know God. You know, there's no other way to put it. There's no nice way to put it. I'm going to give y'all the real deal. All right. And he saved me that first time. And I was like, oh, Jesus, like you turned me around. I'm, I'm living different now, but it's still things I had to learn. And it just was so heavy. I I didn't learn fast enough. And there were certain things that I tried to take with me from my old life. And I didn't know what it was or that it was bad. But it was revealed to be idolatry. It was revealed to be uh, just having poor faith. And uh, (laughs) you don't want your dreams to die. You don't want the things that you care about most to have to give them up because they were rooted in the wrong things right so you always want to be that good soil for God to lay his seed in which is the word I I rejected the word um I didn't know better and that is the only reason why the devil was able to access me like that I hold a had a whole traumatic situation but when everything was said and done I was healed. I felt better, but I did get spiritual warfare, uh, tons of it. I'm talking about crazy visions, can't sleep. Uh, If I do sleep, it's 20 minutes, two hours, you know, just weird stuff was happening to me um, because of my alliance with God and my, I'm not going to say that, um, I'm going to just say I didn't know no better. Like, there's no other way to put it, Uh, but I had a lot of echoing going on. They turned out to be torment, torture, paranoia. You think something's going on because you feel guilty or this and that and the other. Whatever that was, God said, I forgive you. It's okay. Just don't do it no more. And even though I stopped doing those things because he forgave me, I remember those things. And I felt so bad when I read in the Bible how other people had got punished for it or how other people had to suffer. How uh, what other people went through made me cry because I'm like, man, that was me. 
or God would even tell me as I was reading, hey, this is what you was doing. Hmm? So the guilt stayed around a long time. And um, it was hard to work through. But I didn't. Churches. Oops. I will let everyone who.